Okay, and this will this will be really short, but um, chapter nine, understanding the Cisco SDM. I, I wouldn't even. Um, I wouldn't put a whole lot of worry on this. Like, uh, out of all of the like CCNA, CCNP tests I took, I think I had one, possibly two questions that did anything with the SDM. In both of those instances, I did not know the answer, but you could you could look at the lay of the land enough to figure out what the answer was without having to be completely familiar with the uh, the Cisco SDM. So. Um, the the security device manager, Cisco Secu SDM security device manager, basically just provides a GUI for configuring routers. Um, as I said before, exam questions pertaining to the SDM will likely be very limited. Um, so I would I would definitely look through that chapter, probably read through it, um, maybe even like kind of just glance through it rather than fully read. But um, the best way to to become acquainted with the SDM is just by using it. Um, not all routers will even have SDM support. Usually it's only going to be uh, relatively newer routers. Um, for the ones that support it but don't already have it uh, installed on there, you can go to cisco.com and get the SDM so that you can look at it. The, um, this is kind of a, a general overview of the SDM. Um, and this is kind of why like, I don't really think that like trying to teach a class over it. One, one is that like, if you get really deep into Cisco, the GUIs outside of like the um, the security realm using like the GUIs, they're not really that. I'm not gonna say they're not efficient, but they're they're not the preferred method. Like people want the command line if you're like really hardcore Cisco. Like you can just there's a lot more flexibility there. You can do a lot more from there. Um, but the the SDM and different GUIs that Cisco provides are helpful for people that maybe not be maybe are not familiar with um, the GUI or the the CLI or there's a particular set of um, commands they're trying to institute that they don't know in the CLI they might be able to get implemented through the GUI. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, but here is basically just a, a very brief overview. So. You got your, you've got two sets of uh, options, uh, one at the top and one on the bottom, um, the, or one on the side. The, whatever you s select here at the top is going to change your tasks on the, um, on the side here. And you got your home, configure, monitor, and then a couple other options here on the side. Everything, anything like I think you're probably going to get asked potentially even on the uh, CCNA, even CCMP, is probably going to be under the configure option. From the configure option, you've got all of your different options for your various configurations. So if you want to change an IP address or turn up a, an interface, it's going to be under interfaces and connections. If you need to modify uh, ACL or firewall rules to allow you know, whitelist, blacklist options, it's going to be under firewall and ACL. Um, if you want to set up IPsec or any kind of you know, GRE, VPN, it's going to be under the VPN option. Um, Security audit. Uh, what security audit does is it goes through a list of Cisco best practices for security, uh, checks to see if they're implemented on your router, and then it gives you the. If they're not, it gives you the option of implementing those. So, um, it's a whole host of things. It's like a, a basic firewall, making sure that you've got uh, username and password set for um, your your various line con and you know enable and all that kind of thing. So it's just going to go through a checklist in the Cisco of what Cisco considers best best practices. Uh, see if you've got those implemented, and if you don't, give you the options to implement them. Then, um, if you uh, if you need to do something with setting up static routes or enabling dynamic routing protocols, obviously it's going to be under your your routing button here. Um, if you need to set network address translation um, to map a bunch of private IPs to a public IP, it's going to be under your your NAT option here. Um, intrusion prevention is another security feature. Um, you know, basically, <coughs> excuse me detecting active intrusions and creating firewall policies to uh, dynamically act against those. Um, quality of service, if you've got certain types of traffic that you need to make sure gets through and you might have a, a limited bandwidth, like say you've got you know, a, a very small fractional T1 and you're trying to run data as well as like voice calls, you're going to need to have quality service set up to make sure that the, um, the quality of those voice uh, calls doesn't suffer as a result of the um, the pipe being too saturated by other traffic. Um, NAC, I'm not even sure what that does, never had to mess with it, and then they, you've got some additional tasks down here. So the, the idea here is you're not to memorize like every single little option in here. Um, again, if, if you want to get 
familiar with the SDM, get a router and put it on there if it doesn't have it on there already and just kind of poke around here and see what you can do. But as I said again, the, the questions that you're going to have on this are, are probably going to be really limited because the, the CLI is where you really, really need to get um, familiar with and strong with if you want to continue in the Cisco world. Um, but there is the off chance you might get one, possibly two questions on the SDM. So it, again, in my experience on those, you can usually figure out where you need to go based on whatever the question is because it's it's got a visual GUI where you can probably figure out which option you need to go to to set whatever they want you to set. So that is it on chapter nine. Um, any questions on that?